Hi, I'm Brian Bennett, the founder and CEO of a software company called Cortex. Um, really excited for today's conversation. I think we're at a really interesting moment, um, both in terms of real estate technology, but also energy technology. So starting with some context, something I'm really fascinated by is over the last five or 10 years, there's been this explosion in the amount of information being collected by office buildings. And I think the interesting challenge is for the operators, how do you make sense of all of that? And so digging into that a bit, if you look at a moderate to large urban office building, uh, certainly true for the building we're in today, it's easily collecting a thousand data points every single minute, right? An enormous amount of information. And that's coming from the building management system, which provides extremely granular visibility and control over the increasingly complex HVAC infrastructure. And it's coming from the meters as well. And so I think the really fascinating challenge is if you're Tim or Jimmy or Dana or Sarah, the building engineers being asked to operate the HVAC equipment and the building systems each and every day, how do you make sense of that? How do you make sense of a thousand data points being collected every single minute and extract all of the relevant insights? And so that's the problem that we're really hyper-focused on trying to solve, building a tool that allows the engineers to take advantage of this overwhelming amount of information. And doing that by, one, giving them fundamentally easier and faster access to the information that matters the most, by synthesizing the data into the most uh, important charts and visualizations at that time, but also making the data available anywhere, making it mobile through a mobile app. And also giving proactive recommendations. So applying machine learning to the overwhelming amount of information so we can help the building engineers with the 10 to 50 decisions that they have to make each and every day and do that more easily and with greater precision. And so I thought I'd pause for a moment and talk a bit about the role of software versus people and how that's gonna change over time, because I think that's really important. If you look at yesterday being defined as 2000 to 2010, the role of software, I think, was really, from an energy perspective, providing real-time visibility into energy consumption, really backward-looking. And that was a meaningful innovation at that time when the alternative was just getting the utility bill every single month. And at that time, the role of the people, of the engineers, was really to operate the HVAC equipment based on their experience and their judgment. And I think today, 2010 to 2020, I think it's starting to change. I think the role of software is really to bring in analytics and to bring in multiple data streams. So not just meter data, but also BMS data, potentially access control system data, uh, certainly weather data, and use all that information to be able to deliver one, two, three really simple but actionable recommendations for the engineers every single day. And then I think that helps evolve the role of the engineers a bit. They're still controlling the HVAC equipment each and every day, using their judgment, using their experience, but also having the benefit of this analytics, this software, these insights. And I think there's some really important challenges to deliver on the software at this stage. I think one is you know, building a mobile interface that's incredibly simple. Uh, I think that's extremely important, the simplicity. But also having algorithms that are powerful enough that can create meaningful insights for the engineers. Um, and then on the human side, which I also think is really important, um, this is all very new for engineers. And so making sure they're comfortable using the technology, but also comfortable with the output, with the insights coming from the algorithms. Because if, 
if they're not, if they don't use it, then there's not going to be any value. And then looking at it tomorrow, 2020 to 2030, I think the role of software is going to evolve some more. And it's really going to be a single platform providing analytics and visibility sitting on top of all of the disparate subsystems within the building, the BMS, the meters, the access control system, the work ticketing system, and others as well. And I think in doing that, I think it's going to be providing automated, real-time operational changes directly in the building. And I think the role of the people, the role of the engineers is going to evolve clearly further at that point. But I don't think there are going to be fewer engineers. I think they're going to be the same number of engineers. But they're going to be able to focus their time on really high value tasks, on really proactive tasks. And then at that stage, I think there's going to be you know, a whole slew of additional challenges, both technical and human. On the technical side, I think a big challenge is going to be creating a single platform that can seamlessly integrate with all these systems made by different manufacturers. Um, but I think it's also going to be building algorithms, likely using deep learning, that are smart enough to know how each individual piece of equipment should be running at all times. And then again, from a human standpoint, really making sure that the people, the engineers, the operators are comfortable with this new role that technology is playing in their building. So going back to what we're doing today, what we've built is a tool that acts as an application layer on top of the BMS meters and weather data. We run that across a series of machine learning algorithms. So we can deliver really simple charts and visualizations um, to engineers through a mobile app, their tablet, or any computer. So what I'm going to try to do here is show the app live for a large Manhattan office building. There we go. Okay. So this is my phone live right now. You can see my two little rugrats in the background. Um, in the top left corner, you can see the Cortex app, that green bullseye. So if I hit that, as an engineer, I'm taken immediately into my building. This is a large Manhattan office building using the application live right now. And at the top, you can see a few insights for the morning, the afternoon, and overnight. If you go forward a day to tomorrow, you can see when is the ideal time to start up the building systems tomorrow, how and when should they be ramping down the AHUs in the afternoon. And if you go backwards, they can really quickly see how do we do, how do we do in the morning. So this is letting them know that startup was 15 minutes shorter than usual, meaning the tenants reached target temperature when they needed to, but the massive chillers and air handle units uh, were running 15 minutes less than they needed to, which creates really meaningful energy savings. In the afternoon, it's letting them know that by coasting the systems, energy use dropped more than usual. And then overnight, electric use was less than usual. So they get these insights very quickly, very easily for any individual day. And if we go back to today, below the insights, what you see is real-time visibility into energy consumption. So they can drag their finger across and see in the green band, how much energy are we using right now? Uh, how does that compare to typical in gray for similar past days in terms of temperature? And how close are they to setting a new peak demand for that billing period, which can be really expensive, especially in geographies like New York? And the same information for STEAM and then below that, what we do is we pull in whatever is the most relevant operational data for that building and that engineering team. And that, that's always different. But we want to be able to allow them to, in seconds, understand are the tenants' needs being met or the systems running the way they should be. And so if we look into floor temperature and you hit view detail, you can just drag your finger across and see, you know, great, the, the spaces reach target temperature right on time at 8 a.m. 
and you can see how they trended over the course of the day, where they are right now. And then similarly, we're, we're kind of boiling up, making it really easy to access data points related to air handler units and central plant. So I'm gonna take us back out of this. Okay. So, you know, I think the, the charts and the algorithms and the visualizations are great, but at the end of the day, they're only valuable insofar as they can help the building engineers change the way that they're operating the systems to drive down energy consumption and to create savings. And so that's what this page is showing using, as an example, a large Manhattan office building. Um, what you see over on the right is a day after it started using Cortex. Um, in green, you can see what the actual KW was for that day. And in gray, you can see what the building was using in the past prior to using Cortex, with days with similar weather, uh, similar minutes of sunlight, things like that. And what you can see is by using the technology the engineers were able to make a broad set of changes so things like pushing back when the systems are turning on in the morning, right? You can see some meaningful savings there. Things like coasting the fans at four o'clock and you can see energy consumption dipping a little bit earlier. Three, four, and five, these are all really about areas of operational drift that the engineers using the technology we're able to identify and then resolve. And what that did is really help drive down baseload consumption, which you see overnight. And then six, seven, and eight, this is really all about um, managing peak demand, which, you know, as I mentioned in New York and other geographies can be a really significant component to the utility cost. Um, and so in conclusion, you know, I think, I think it's a really exciting time for technology uh, especially applied to the energy sector. I think if you pair the right technology um, with engineers, I think there's just a tremendous amount of savings that can be created, both energy and sustainability, but also financially. Thank you.